Well, I'm Richard Raffin. Um, I've had requests to uh, just say a little bit about cup chucks, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. So, cup chucks are really just a cylindrical hole in a lump of metal, and uh, they go on like that. Uh, they're an old style production chuck. Uh, so generally you can either do it as a square or in this case I've turned these between centers to start with that just goes in there and You whack it in and away you go And it's ideal for doing things like goblets or little um, yeah, any kind of small end grain work and then to get the blank out or the remainder of the blank you just knock it out with a knockout bar so it's a very quick means of um, of uh, mounting something for production and as you can probably see there's just a little bruise uh, around here where the chuck actually fits so the key here to, to uh, when you're turning the blank is that this is a very shallow taper now, if you're not quite sure, I've done tens of thousands of those, um, but the, uh, if you're not quite sure um, how to get it in square, when you're roughing between centres, you can mark some lines on there, and that means that when you knock it in, you can kind of swing it around and see where the line is in relation to the opening. Um, now that also means that if you're doing this off the lathe, uh, the um, so if you were putting in a in a in a very very big lump of metal, um, you wouldn't actually do this on the lathe bed either. But uh, you you could then stand that on some big block and and really whack it in, and you can see where you are. Uh, for straightness as you go in. So that's with the big one. Richard, what are the pros and cons of using one of these over a regular chuck? Um, primarily money. Uh, they'd be a lot cheaper to make. Um, as a production turner, um, they're a lot faster to use because uh, the, I mean, normally you'd, like with the little salt scoops I used to make, um, the blanks were uh, 22 millimeters square and I used to actually put them into the Morse 3 taper on the graduate lathes I worked in in the 80s um, and uh, but that'll just knock straight into that so it's very fast um, and uh, by the time um, as, as far as the um, using the thing goes in production uh, by the time I've knocked out the blank and um, and picked up another one ready to go it just the whole work just flows a lot better than messing around with a um, uh, with a with a wrench into the chuck um, it's really as simple as that um, so if you can work with squares which are the right size for the chuck you've got that's um, the best way to go um, Ideally, you can um, you can also knock a square into this, uh, which I think is 40 mil, into a two-inch one. Um, with the smaller one, uh, which I've got here, this is a one-inch or 25 mil, and I used to make a lot of little salt scoops like this. Uh, they were a bit better than this. This one's a bit thick. Um, but uh, for that, I was able to uh, have a, a blank which just went straight, could just knock it straight into the square, just like that. So, and to get it running straight, I see where it's it's um, for, it, it's leaning away from me. So I strike it across to pull it in, rather than kind of pulling it out. So that. That's right, and that's probably not too bad. And I'll just turn that into something frivolous so you can see how it works. So. Of course, if you want to, um, you could um, bring up the tail centre and uh, support it. So 
This is a three quarter inch skew chisel, about 20 mil or 19 millimeters. You can see that, but those are fairly heavy cuts and I haven't pulled it out yet. So we'll just turn one of these little finial things, so something long and thin, um, which when you're first starting, it's very good practice to do stuff like this. You might be better off with a a slightly smaller skew, but you can do it with a larger one. But the main thing is that it's going to be very good for your technique. Once it starts getting thin, I'm going to go to the half inch skew now, just slightly sharper. Then you put little details on it. Oops. Well, you probably can't see that, it's hidden behind the top. Now, if you do anything really long and thin, we'll just stop the camera a second and then move that. jumping around all over the place but you go gently no pressure against the wood that's the key to turning no tool pressure against the wood if you can avoid it and keep it to the absolute minimum this is fairly green maple and it's quite tough I took the edge clean off a bandsaw blade when I was cutting it up. Now, I don't do many spindles, so I'm really not used to um, the kind of shapes and things. Well, it's not so much the shapes as the combination of shapes to make a design. The man to watch is Steve Jones. Right, so I'm pretty well up to the end here. I can't really do too much more with this. I'll just pop that off. Or in fact, if you want to show... Oh, forgotten. If you want to show how clever you are, you leave it on there. And... Um, you can... Oh, much more wood in there than I needed. Um, and just leave it there and you can see how little wood you waste once it's in the uh, chuck